Japan is known for having quite the menagerie of mythical creatures. Hey there, demons. It's me, your boy. Ranging from the standard shape-shifting foxes all the way to whatever this fucking thing is. Have you ever played a game called Animal Crossing? If you have, you know about Tom Nook. On top of being the frontrunner for the capitalist regime and a crook who underpays and overcharges, he's also an adorable little... Uh... He's actually based off of a tanuki, which is a real-life animal known as the raccoon dog that is native to Japan. But in Japanese folklore, they are so much more than that. This is what I like to call one of the big three when it comes to the yokai. After hearing about them, you're going to be glad that our old friend Tom here wears an apron all the time. Hey there, Tom. I'm just here to drop off some logs and flowers. The good stuff, you know? Uh, what? This isn't how this interaction normally goes, man. No, 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 no. I I'm okay. Just give me my bells, please. Obviously, you could speak for hours on what Tanuki were capable of, but I'm only going to focus on one part of them. And that's the scrotum. If you've seen the Studio Ghibli film Palm Poco, you'll know that the Tanuki's nutsack is capable of some mind-boggling feats. That's absolutely incredible. Any person watching this is unable to sit there without saying, Damn, I wish I had a constant source of magical shape-shifting within my nuts. This movie only scratched the surface when it came to what they can do with their scrote skin. It could be stretched up to the size of 8 tatami mats, which is roughly 15 meters. Can you imagine what you could do with that much power? Now, you may have heard the phrase, the only bigger flex than having a thick wallet is having a thicker nutsack, and that's for a good reason. This adorable little creature's baby makers were stolen from them and used by metal workers to produce a thing called gold leaf. This led to the pun kin no tama, which means small ball of gold. This is what started the craze surrounding their scrote. It was thanks to this that the tanuki scrotums became such a hot commodity. When big clothing got word of this, they took action, ripping every tanuki they could find of their pride and joy, starting the mass production of their new coin purses. If you were able to get your hands on one of these bad boys, you became what we know today as that guy. Normally it's what's on the inside that counts, but nope, not here baby, we're only interested in the skin. Anything else is null and void. Obviously the tanuki had to take action, striking back at big clothing and every human that took part in this genital mutilation. With the help of their supernatural nut powers, the tanuki were able to wreak havoc, causing testicular manslaughter from all angles. They were able to finally chill out and ended up becoming really good at drumming on their own bellies. They used this technique to scare woodsmen and hunters. As we all know, with great nuts comes great responsibilities. Sadly, some of them weren't strong enough to carry the crushing weight of their own ironclad sacks. This pushed them deeper into their own alcoholism. This is way more relatable than all the other stuff I read about them when doing my research. The next yokai we're going to talk about is Akaname. This sleep paralysis demon's name translates into filth liquor which is more commonly known as average 4chan user. The word Akka refers to dead skin that accumulates on a person's body, along with all the other gross stuff that builds up as you try to squeeze in one more game of League of Legends before showering. Akaname is rather childlike in resemblance, if you ignore its tiny misshapen head, bird feet, and Gene Simmons tongue. When they aren't spending their time in your favorite Roblox streamer's bedroom, waiting for them to fall asleep so they can go full goblin mode on the absolute lack of sanitary discipline that's been building up for years, they like to hang out in bathhouses. At least those end up being a little cleaner. Even this yokai has its limits. Now I know you're all asking the same question. What that mouth do? And we're getting to that. You fucking pervert. Their long tongue is used to slurp up all the goodies that get left behind. Grease. Dirt. That random gunk on the toilet that you never clean. Oh, is that just me? Huh. Very well. When I was reading this, I was like, hell yeah. This little dude is basically a human vacuum that does all the work for you. But in reality, their goal is to teach you a lesson. The only reason they showed up in the first place is because you were disgusting. Sure, they love sucking slop off the floor like no one's business but I'm pretty sure that's not how they want to spend all of their days. After they clean up all of your mess, they end up leaving, but not without leaving all of their disease behind. This is to hopefully teach you to not be such a slob. 
Ironically, the cosmetic retailer Lush, who specializes in hygiene products, made a bath bomb depicting Akaname. It's a pretty funny concept, but it really does make a lot of sense. They are the masters of grime removal after all, even if their methods are a little questionable. Give me that gunk. You're going to want to hold on to your butts for this one. Makapa is another one of the big three alongside Tanuki. Except the Tanuki is actually a real animal, and this is just an amalgamation of really fucked up stuff. This guy is just kind of leftovers from God. He didn't really know what to do, I don't think. For this fella, just think of a lubed up salamander, ranging in size from child to fucking gorilla, with human appendages and a turtle-like shell. And not to mention the European monk haircut. Depending on where you travel in Japan, you may find shrines of this yokai dedicated to worship of them. Based on their ridiculous appearance and how they ended up depicted in Japan as statues and tourism mascots, it's easy to forget that this yokai is capable of a lot more than being some westerner's favorite manga character. The name Kappa means river child, which makes sense since rivers and waterways are usually where they hang out. This is so well known that there's warning signs all over Japan near waterways, depicting children and women getting kidnapped and drowned by these creatures. Also, the name River Child is way too adorable sounding to make up for what this slimy kinkster has to offer. On slow days, they enjoy honing their skills in the art of sumo wrestling, and passing gas through all three of their anuses. Yeah, you heard me. Three. But typically their weeks are flat out with the whole terrorizing the public thing. Whether that be hiding in restroom toilets to try and sneak peeks, or you know, just killing people. They also have a huge hatred towards animals, especially horses. The motif of Kappa trying to drown a horse is found everywhere in Japan. A Kappa's preferred method of attack is to drown its victims, which makes sense considering they live in water. Usually they go for the rear to get at the Shirakadama, which is a magical ball of anus meat. Obviously these balls carry immense power. It's said that if you collect seven of these balls, you can use them to summon Shenron and get your wishes granted. Tell, Tell me what, what you, you want, want as a as wish. wish. Yeah, I'll just take a really stretchable nutsack. What? Sadly for the Kappa, these balls are the equivalent of crack to them. Which means they're easily hunted so long as the poachers have the willingness to go commando and hang out on the side of a boat for a little while. The Kappa's greatest strengths are also among some of their greatest weaknesses. Honor. Kindness. Flatulence. The haircut they have is more than a fashion statement. This bald spot acts as a dish of water, which is considered the life force of the Kappa. Kappa are obsessed with being polite, so let's say you run into one. All you have to do is bow your head and they'll return the gesture, causing that sweet, sweet bald spot nectar to run out. This renders them unable to leave the bowing position until the bowl gets refilled. If you're the one to refill it, the Kappa is forever subservient. The lesser known and somewhat humorous aspect of Kappa folklore is related to good old fashioned flatulence. According to some stories, Kappa are fascinated by the act of fart, and they are said to find the sound and smell amusing. In these tales, people encountering Kappas sometimes try to trick them just by farting loudly. The Kappa, being easily entertained like the average middle schooler, may become distracted or amused by the sound, giving the person an opportunity to escape. Now, I wanted to save the best for last. Well, at least in my opinion, the best. The Shirime may not be the weirdest or scariest yokai, but it is by far the funniest of them all. The legend goes, in the good old days, if late at night, you found yourself wandering the roads that lead to Kyoto, there was a high probability that you'd bump into this mysterious stranger. For some reason they had no face, but were still able to ask for a moment of your time. You oblige, of course, being the respectful samurai that you are. All of a sudden the faceless individual removes his kimono and you're greeted by nothing but this naked entity. They turn around, and you notice something is off immediately. Between the cheeks is nothing other than a gigantic eyeball staring at you. It blinks. You blink back. As far as I'm aware, the main goal of this prairie dogging eyeball creature was just to be the most badass prankster in all of Japan. And what better way to do that than hiding in the shadows, butt naked, terrifying people with your dump truck when they least expect it. And that's it. That's literally all they do. No backstory, no explanation, no reason other than a laugh. Like the tales from many cultures, Japanese folklore often imparts moral lessons and wisdom. These stories teach values such as kindness, honesty, perseverance, and humility. 
The beauty of the yokai mentioned is that they're meant to be humorous or entertaining tales passed down through generations, often with a moral lesson or a playful element. Even the kappa, if you can look past all the butt stuff.